Here are the pros and cons you need to know about buying land in Texas. This is a very common question I get. This video is gonna give you the benefits, the pros, the cons, whatever you wanna call it, but you have to watch this to know what you're buying. I'm Trey with the Calvary Group, brokered by Real. So the first pro is going to be that they don't make land anymore. The good Lord made it and we're here, we're stuck with it. So if you wanna be in a certain location, they're not gonna make more of it. And I know it sounds kind of silly, but it really is a good reminder that it can be a really good investment. The second thing is that there's higher inventory of land. So there is a lot of land for sale for different purposes. Now, they don't move as fast as houses and they have a much higher days on market, which the visibility makes it better. So you can see what's available for the land that you wanna purchase. So that's a great pro. The third pro of buying land in Texas is that there's not a lot of holding costs. What that means is you don't have to pay for water use, you don't have to pay for electrical use, so the monthly upkeep is less. So, because there's no house on it, there's nobody to use these utilities. Now, there are holding costs with land, but it's less than if you were to live in a house. So, the fourth pro is going to be what's called a land function. So, that land function is what that land is intended for. So, the pro is when you have 10 acres in Texas, depending on the deed restrictions, you can hunt on it. You can have what's called an agricultural exemption. So if you buy a half a million dollar ranch and the sales price is around 500,000, you're going to pay much less taxes if you have animals on it. And the agriculture exemptions are specific to a certain amount of cows, a certain amount of bees you can even get away with. And then there's also what's called a wildlife exemption, which is even more of a discount. So a wildlife exemption, I've seen as low as $25 a year in property taxes for huge 25 plus acre ranches. So yes, the sales price may be more, but your agriculture exemptions and your wildlife exemptions are going to have your holding costs very low. As opposed to buying a house which is 500,000, then your property taxes are much, much higher. And raw land with agriculturals or wildlife is gonna be much less than a house on the ranch. The fifth pro about buying land here in Texas is the development. You can potentially buy 20, 30 acres of land and subdivide it into different uses, depending on the town and the restrictions, but typically you can very easily cut a parcel of 30 acres easily into 10 and resell them. You can put different utility easements onto the different parcels. Another thing to remember is if you buy a 30 acre ranch, there could be mineral rights that are attached to that property. Mineral rights are a separate entity when you buy land. So just because you buy a 20 acre ranch doesn't mean that the mineral rights will convey or they does it just by buying it doesn't mean that you will get the mineral rights to it. That is a separate transaction, a separate owner. So ownership is divided into three. So you have subterrain ownership, which is the mineral rights, then you have the actual land, and then you have the airship. So airship is, is usually with the land, mineral rights are the ones that are different. All right, enough about the good stuff, let's talk about the bad stuff. This is the first con about buying land in Texas, is property taxes are higher, so if you're not able to get the agriculture exemptions or wildlife exemptions, property taxes on average with the United States is higher. And if you're able to buy these ranches or big lots, cash, that's always gonna be the best because part of the con of buying land is the holding cost of the loan. So loans, typically, you're gonna have to put 20% down. So if that's a $100,000 lot, the bank is going to ask for a, sometimes 20% down. If you're a veteran with the Veterans Land Board, you could potentially get it for less of a down payment, but typically on average, they're gonna ask for 20% down on land or ranches. And the interest rates is always higher. 
they're closer to eight, nine, 10% interest rates for land. The second con about buying land in Texas is the utilities, not themselves, but putting in the utilities. So when you buy uh, raw land, you have to get either a water well or a uh, septic system, and you may have to do plumbing all the way to the neighboring ranch or landowner to wire in their electrical. So some ranches have uh, homeowners associations where they share a community water well. Some of them you have to drill your water well and they typically would cost upwards of 20,000 and up. They can cost any potentially to 150,000. Whoa, those utility expenses are very high to put in, but once they're there, then you can enjoy the beautiful hill country in Texas. So the third con, yeah, it's kind of a con, but it's kind of a not, but you have to watch out for the deed restrictions. So every ranch or piece of land in Texas has some kind of deed restrictions. There may be some that are no deed restrictions, but overall these deed restrictions have been around for hundreds of years. I've seen deed restrictions that say, on this 20 acre ranch, you can't have loud barking dogs. You're on a 20 acre ranch, how can you hear a loud barking dog? But they are there and there's something to watch out for. Now, the enforceability of these deed restrictions are specific to the towns. So please get with the locals to find out what the deed restrictions are and how they are reported. Another deed restriction that I've seen before is you can't have a loud, high-powered rifle. That was written back in the 1850s, hand, by, written by hand, and it is a restriction that nobody adheres to. So these deed restrictions, you can object to them, uh, but get with the title company and the local county to see if you can remedy those deed restrictions. All right. The last one is gonna be the most important con, but let's talk about the fourth con, which is going to be the expense of the survey. So surveyors, they charge depending on how big the land is. So if it's your typical residential uh, fixed community, then you're going to look at around 450 bucks for the survey if it's sitting less than, I would say a, a quarter of an acre, probably even less than that. It's around 400 to $500. If you're looking at a half acre, it's gonna double. If you're looking for 10 plus acres, it can go up to tens of thousands of dollars. So to know, it's very important to know the easements, the egress, ingress of um, the land. And if there's any shared spaces uh, in those easements, you should know the ownership of those easements to see if you can maybe take over those easements and know that these roads, if they're commonly used, then it can be created as an easement. So that is another con of buying land in Texas, is knowing the expense of the survey and knowing the easements that come across with them. And finally, our number five con of buying land in Texas, the bad news, the good stuff. This is what I think you should really watch out for is squatters. Squatters and maintaining the land. So people here, they love their land. So you could have a hundred acre ranch, very beautiful, but if there's a squatter that takes over a couple of acres and they take it over long enough, here we do have possible squatters where they can take part of your land if they start maintaining it and they start paying the taxes on it. Yes, they can take the ranch from you depending on where they live on that parcel or on that land. So squatters are very, very important to watch out for. Get with your law enforcement or with the local county because there is Texas law that says if they camp and stay and maintain the land and pay the taxes, they can be awarded that portion of the property. So in case you didn't know, squatters are defined as somebody who shows up to the ranch and literally sets up shop. If they have a tent and they build a home, they have driveway, they maintain the, the areas, if they fence it off. I mean, squatters has uh, a definition to where they're maintaining the land and they are paying the taxes on it. So once tax time comes and if they have an address there, and you don't notice it and you don't give them any 
uh, notice to leave or notice to vacate, they can have ownership. Doesn't happen all the time, but it is very possible and it is in our laws that once you take over the land, it's gonna be very difficult to get that back. The number one tip I have for you, I know this is a pros and cons list, but I wanna give you a tip. The number one tip is going to be location, location, location. You hear that all the time with buying houses, but land is very similar because if you just wanna buy and hold land and you have very low holding cost, make sure you buy it where there's an investment opportunity. Maybe it's buy commercial land, and if it is a commercial buyer, did you know that they don't have to disclose who's buying it? Texas is a non-disclosure state, which means H-E-B, uh, it could be a chain restaurant, it could be a shopping strip, they don't have to disclose who's buying it and for how much. So that's something to watch out for. Hope this video helped. We'll see you in the next one.